What's good, YouTube? You know what it is. OTB Gail back in the cut. You know what's up. Back with another banger. Find out why the worst American president ever was so loved. This guy, Thomas Sowell, and it's some Thomas Sowell shit, fam. And listen, when I first dropped the Candace Owens video about slavery and the facts and shit, it, it, it blew up low key. And a lot of people was fucking with it. I think it's a great opportunity to go down that journey while I still do music reactions because that's my shit. That shit like therapy. But at the same time, there's a lot of shit I need to learn and why not learn it on here? Why not um, interact with other people and other ideas and other um, other beliefs? You know? So shit. If you if you, if you you into the Thomas Soul and you into the facts and you into history, subscribe, bro, because I got some shit on here already. And, and, and yeah, let's let's find out what Thomas Sowell got going on, fam. Who he talking about? The worst American president ever was so loved. I don't even know. Listen, bro, it be so many bullshit people in the in the in the position of being a president. I don't know who the worst. You feel me? Let's get it. A few clips of the president of the United States delivering his State of the Union address earlier this year. Clip number one. Higher education can't be a luxury. It is an economic imperative that every family in America should be able to afford. Higher education, an imperative. All he's asking is that all young Americans should have the same opportunity to get a really good education that Tom Sowell had. Tom? I love the way, the use of the word opportunity. Right. Uh, it you sounded know, good. I had as much opportunity to become an NBA star as Michael Jordan had. It just happens that there was some difference in skill. And so the same thing with education. There is no point trying to run people through institutions that they have very little interest in. Right. Uh, and, and that, that, that they may Bro, that just made me think of what Candace Owens was saying on the Dr. Phil situation, you know? She was talking with that. Um the black professor. She was trying to explain that culture kids into institutions to check off the list, you know, to check off the school's uh, requirements. Not really realizing you not saying this kid isn't smart or he's not capable of maintaining where he's at, but we put him in a position to where he may not feel comfortable. He may not be. I don't know how to explain it, bro. We put a we put a black kid at a at a at a great institution, and not saying he not a great student or he didn't do good before he came to college. It's just the fact that we put him somewhere to fail, not necessarily put him somewhere to thrive. You know what I'm saying? So we put him in a whole different environment. We put him in an institution that breeds. Geniuses and greatness not saying he can't be a genius and a greatness and be great at other places because every institution breeds their own Geniuses and greatness, you know, it's kind of hard to break down. It makes sense not saying Black people colored people Whatever the case may be not saying that they don't deserve to be at institutions or deserve the opportunity but You can't you can't want to make a difference so bad or you want to make this look like this so bad that you just placing kids where they might not even should be or belong or 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 you know want to be you feel me so he made a good example and he made a little hum humor with it you know with him trying to compare himself to michael jordan like that was a joke you know to say that everybody got the same opportunity and whatnot. The way Obama said it, he made it sound like, he made it sound good. Like everybody has, has an opportunity at this and that and at the top highest level of education. Everybody deserves an opportunity to show why they deserve to be at Duke, UNC, Notre Dame. You see what I'm saying? 
you can't just place a kid at UNC, at Duke, at Notre Dame, and put him in a situation and then say, all right, now you got the opportunity to, to get a 4.0. Or now you got the opportunity to graduate from Duke. Like, like he, the opportunity come before that. You got to prove and show that you can be at this university, that you can maintain the work that come at this university and things like that, you know? We, we so caught up in color that we're just placing people everywhere. And then making it sound like we all got opportunity. And it's just like the opportunity come before the actual shit, you know? Your opportunity is high school, the placement test, and all that. That's your opportunity. Show that in those tests and in those circumstances, you know, your strengths and your and, and past those things and whatnot to get into the university. We we shouldn't just place anybody in the university and then say, let's see if you deserve to be here. Let's see if you can, you know what I'm saying, pass classes. So I feel like that's what he meant. I could be fucking wrong. Let's get it. And so the same thing with education. There is no point trying to run people through institutions that they have very little interest in. Right. Uh, and that they may not be suited for. Right. Uh, in fact, I would argue that one of the problems of American education is you have a lot of people in college who have no interest in what a college is supposed to be. Right. Nor is there any reason why they should. And so the intellect, the... So the you water down yeah. the education of the people who are there to get an education because of the people who are not there for that purpose and who, are, and, 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 they're, and who you're trying to appease in some way. And is the impulse that we just saw of Barack Obama and his supporters... Uh, to in constantly more and more people run them through college, run them yes. through college, and that's what? That's to enhance the standing of intellectuals in society, to teach more and more Americans to defer to intellectuals? Is that part of what's going on? It's to win votes, frankly. All right. Straightforward as that. President Obama wants to go. I will not cede the wind or solar or battery industry to China or Germany because we refuse to make the same commitment here. We've subsidized oil companies for a century. That's long enough. This is pre, this is pre cylindro of course. pre cylindro <laughs> Tom? You, you know, this notion of picking out something and calling it a good thing, like education or affordable housing or whatever it might be, uh, everything is a matter of trade off. Uh, uh, what, what did the man say there? That, that he will not cede wind or solar or batis, battery the battery industry to China or Germany because we refuse to make the same commitment. It's amazing that, that here is a man talking about five different industries in none of which he has the slightest experience. Right. You know, but because he has these degrees from the places you mentioned, uh, he thinks, and, and people have told him how clever he is, he now thinks that he can, can, can do this. So can you... No human being on this planet can do this. Can you explain, Tom, the particular appeal to intellectuals of the kind you describe here, of the green movement, of the environmental movement? Oh, it, it shows them again in the revelated relish. They're the, they're the wise and noble, forcing the rest, forcing the rest of us poor dummies uh, to do what's right, uh, you know, e e even though we don't want to. So it's what your old friend Karl Marx would have described as the will to power. Yes. All right. You don't want to. You don't want to cut them a little slight. That's. I mean, you're just saying it's ego and pride and vanity. Right. Yes. All right. <laughs> Once again, the president of the United States. Tax reform should follow the Buffett rule. If you make more than a million dollars a year, you should not pay less than thirty percent in taxes. And my Republican friend Tom Coburn is right. Washington should stop subsidizing millionaires. In fact, if you're earning a million dollars a year, you shouldn't get special tax subsidies or deductions. On the other hand, if you make under $250,000 a year, like 98% of American families, your taxes shouldn't go up. I love it. Tom. When people keep their own money, that's called subsidizing them. I love it. You know, that, that's the brilliance of intellectuals. That they, 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 they can use words in such a malleable way that they can... They, I mean, the, uh, Obama. Bro, that's facts, bro. And that's the thing with these people like in power or these people you see on the news or you see on TV. Like, bro, these people are... 
professional speakers like they pros at making shit sound so good to the audience you know they know how to use the right words they know exactly what the people are looking for you know they say all the right shit and do all the wrong shit centralizing them i love it you know that, that's the brilliance of intellectuals that they, 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 they can use words in such a valuable way that they can that, I mean, the, obama has an absolute talent of saying things that make no sense they not <laughs> only sound plausible but inspiring right you know, subsidi- they, we're subsidizing the oil companies when they deduct the cost of doing business you know, in order to arrive at the figure of how much net income they have everybody does that right so this notion though that that if you if you're rich you ought to pay more straightforward enough no it is straightforward about us it's also straightforward nonsense yeah. what is that thanks uh, people don't but they often speak of people who are rich as people who happen to have money right extremely few people happen to have money there aren't that many rockefellers well, but Rockefeller didn't happen to have money. But his heirs happened to have it. Heirs, his heirs happened right. to have money. So you're doing but Rock, but Ro- Rock, Rockefeller, he, Rockefeller reduced the coil, cost of oil to a fraction of what it had been before him, right. benefiting millions of people across the country. Therefore, they bought their oil from Rockefeller rather than from people who had more expensive ways of producing oil. And, for example, one of them being the, the uh, use of uh, tank cars on the railroads. The progressives were, were livid that Rockefeller uh, could ship his oil at a cheaper price than the other producers. It never occurred to them that oil, uh, Rockefeller shipped his oil in tank cars, which are a hell of a lot cheaper to transport than in barrels. Right. I mean, we still measure oil in barrels today, but we ship it in tankers. Right. And uh, that's how he became a, a multi-billionaire. So we know from the study of economic history that wealthy people get wealthy by creating jobs, lowering prices of, yes. of products rather than Bill Gates, the richest man in America, one of the richest men in the world, invented an, invented an entire industry that yes. simply didn't. All right. We know all that. And we also know, as we mentioned earlier, okay. that cutting taxes worked to spur economic growth in the 20s. Again, under John Kennedy in the 60s, actually, actually the, it was Johnson who ended up most of the tax cuts took place, let's call it under the 60s, and then again in Ronald, Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. And then George W. Bush. And George W. Bush. So how is it that he can stand there in the face of this overwhelming evidence and be taken seriously? I'm not asking now about Barack Obama as an intellectual. I'm asking about the people listening to him. The, that's the question of the hour. You have people who uh, don't stop and think. You've had dumbed-down education. You've had propagandistic education. And people, he's, what he's saying connects with all those with all those kinds of things. Uh-huh. Uh, in fact, it goes the other way too. I was just doing some research on Detroit and its decline, and they kept raising the city income tax. And every time they raised the tax rate, the tax revenues went down. Uh, in, in 2008, uh, Charles Gibson put this to, to Obama when he was a candidate. And he said, "Why are you for raising the tax rate on the rich? Because." Uh, you often get more revenue at lower tax rates right. than at the higher tax rates. And he said, well, it's a question of social justice. In other words, he doesn't really care about whether the government raises more revenues. If he can get people mad at the rich and they vote for him, then the pop, pop, then it's a success. Just as uh, Coleman uh, Young's policy is in the tr- You often get more revenue at lower tax rates than at the higher tax rates. And he said, well, it's a question of social justice. In other words, he doesn't really care about whether the government raises more revenues. If he can get people mad at the rich and they vote for him, then the pop, pop, then it's a success. Just as uh, Coleman uh, Young's policies in Detroit were a great political success for him. Mm. It ruined Detroit, but it, it didn't. I just have, uh, you and I have to be reading on a similar subject. From 1950 to the present, two things happened. One was that the population of the United States of America roughly doubled, mm. and the other was that the population of Detroit fell by roughly half. Yes. Unbelievable. All right. You write in Intellectuals in Society about the intellectual's view of diplomacy and military affairs. One last clip of the President of the United States. Uh, Thank you. I'm sitting down. <laughs> Look at Iran. 
Through the power of our diplomacy, a world that was once divided about how to deal with Iran's nuclear program now stands as one. The regime is more isolated than ever before. Its leaders are faced with crippling sanctions. And as long as they shirk their responsibilities, this pressure will not relent. Tom, will you sleep better tonight having heard that? <laughs> uh, I, may, I may take a sleeping pill so I can forget it. <laughs> the, this, this man has diddled with Iran to the point where we're the military people saying, you know, even if we decide to go in and, and bomb that place, they're so dispersed, so far underground, it's by no means clear that we can do it. Damn. The time when he was going through all this wonderful diplomacy he talks about was precisely the time when those things were put underground and dispersed. It's like, it's like when Hitler was arming, you know, that, as Churchill said, at one point, a memorandum could have stopped Hitler. Yeah. You know, because the power was so lopsidedly on the side of the Western democracies. Uh, it's like they could say, stop rearming or else. And we can't do that with, the, with, 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 the, with they diddled the, they diddled with, with Iran to the point where now we don't know. Now, right. there, there's something interesting about to me. Whereas with social policy, intellectuals tend to go for the policies mm. that give them greater power. What greater power could an intellectual seek than military power? The power to blow things up. So why? Oh, why because, because, they because from, oh, oh, because because they believe that again. Uh, that their intellect is the, is, is the unique factor that is going to save us. And to say that there are a bunch of military people uh, are going to be more effective than doing all these terribly clever things that Obama is doing uh, uh, undermines their whole position. I see. I fought with this video. <laughs> and it was some shit in there that I had, I had just learned, no cap. But I do know, like, the fact that Obama was one of the first or the first black president, he could have said anything and nobody would have changed their mind. Like they would have voted for him regardless, just because of that right there. The first black president, this is what we need, blah, blah, blah. He could have said anything, any type of bullshit, he still would have got voted. I think he's saying there's a lot of shit that Obama would say or claim, but it was just horse shit. It was to get you to look at the other side like this regardless of what he says he wants you to look at the other side as this and as soon as you do that it's a no-brainer no matter what he says as long as you look at the other side as this you're gonna vote for him regardless there's some good shit to, to be watching bro they should be playing thomas soul in school some people might fuck around but back then y'all should have put that thomas soul on y'all should have had thomas soul come and speak I should have did a lot of shit, bro. But I know y'all got an agenda. I know that. Let me know in the comments what y'all thought about the video and the reaction. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. Hit that share. You know what it is, man. OTV Gil, out of there.